Hello, this is Andreas Kaufmann. So, welcome, Ralph Gibson, a long-term friend of Leica. It's great to have you here in our talk. Andreas, what a pleasure. Thanks so much for this invitation, and uh, I was looking forward to it, and uh, thanks to the great technology, we can have this discussion. Yeah, and this is the connection between Salzburg, so I'm not in Metzler, and a little, a little nice place in the US. Sag Harbor Island. in Long Island, yes. Okay, so let's start the talk. Uh, you said at a certain time, um, photojournalist wasn't for you, right? Yeah, that's, it's very interesting because when I started photography in the Navy in 1956, yeah. all the magazines and all the books were about uh, powerful documentary photography. Yeah. Yeah. And so By the I way, really it's wanted... considered to be art nowadays. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it was definitely a different period. And so I, I, by 19, as you know, when I came out, I went to art school. I bought my first Leica. And by 1960. You, with your own money? Yes. But it was oh. very funny. An M2 with a, with a 50 lens cost $300. <laughs> well, the dollar had a different, you know, yeah, big dollar. <laughs> and and I, I was working as a darkroom guy while I was in art school, and I paid this camera $25 a week. To I saw, okay. Yeah. And, <laughs> but the thing is, all, for, for many years, from 1960 to about 1967, I was, I was learning to be a documentary like a guy on the street. Yeah. And, uh, I still use these techniques in my work now, even though it's very formal. Okay. So it was it was like learning. You the mean grammar. hiding somewhere, looking, and then shooting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <We'll> be, <laughs> pretending, yeah. How she made it like this, you know, or like. This. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I have a I have a funny picture you. Um, maybe you know this guy. Oh, Gene Smith. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. You had I about knew him. Eight like, cameras here. And then all those. Watching, yeah. but he could shoot. <laughs> he was the best with lenses. Nobody yeah. understood lenses better than Gene Smith. Yeah. Anyway, so so you use these techniques still? I still do because, yeah. because uh, you know, I've been working in Israel. I've been working now, I've been working walking around Long Island. And, yeah. uh, uh, I have my uh, I have my mono, my M10 mono, and I'm working with the. You have the M10 already, okay. M10 mono, absolutely. Good choice. Yes, I had the first one in New York. <laughs> okay. So, uh, yes. Oh, I have it here too. I think. Yeah. Which one? M10 mono, but yeah. with an old Elkan lens. Oh, with an Elkan. Yeah. Oh, that, um, that must because, produce um, One of the questions I have later, because you always um, you always say. It's the 50, that's the 50, that's the lens for me, yeah? yeah. And for me, this is um, always a, a bit of a portrait lens, yeah? And I, I always prefer 35. So you are committed to the 50 and you go around <laughs> shooting things with a 50. <laughs> well, you know, the, the, the 35 is very good if you're looking with two eyes and you, you shoot horizontal. Yeah. And if you close one eye, okay, sure. okay, everything now. gets vertical. I, you, you are, I you prefer, okay. You know, that's, but now <laughs> uh, I discovered with, with the digital yeah. sensor yeah. that I like a longer focal length. I think the okay. 75 is normal. I think 75 is normal for, really? for, for the sensor. Oh. This, there's a difference in language uh -huh. and, I, and I'm working very hard to, to understand the difference between digital and film, how the sensor as opposed to how the emulsion reacts and there is a difference yeah. it's you uh, yeah. know it's a different language you could you could describe the leica in german or you could describe it in english it's the same leica but different language <laughs> okay it's still the same like by the way do you have a 75 yes actually this is the 75 i just looked and see i have the 75 on yes it's it's i have the 70 oh. this is the elmarit but i also have the the the, the good one the big one, uh, uh, the, the 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 two or the one point four. I have both. I have oh, both. Okay. I had the, the one point four for is, years. It's a little bit of a dark to um to focus. See, that's what I like with this. With this, I go from th this is nothing. It, okay, it's yeah. one inch, 
Yeah, okay. At this point in life, this makes yeah. a difference. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that's why so, I use this camera, this lens. So, so I just um, uh, stepped in. So uh, you said, um, photojournalist, nothing for you, but you learned a few things. But in those days, it was the so-called, if you're a photographer, you have to be a photojournalist, a street photographer, etc. Absolutely. And how does yeah. for you? Well, you know, and, and then at this time in 1960, I became assistant to Dorothea Lang, who was the great documentary photographer. But that's that's usually in, in photography, you say that's the knighthood, right? <laughs> well, it was a pretty, it was my first big break. Yeah. yeah. And then I came to New York in 67. Yeah. And I was immediately accepted into Magnum. But I only stayed for three months because I didn't like it. And then I met Robert Frank, and I worked with him. Yeah. Yeah. And so I understood from the great masters the documentary aesthetic. Yeah. I knew what they, you know, Robert Frank's book on the Americans remains the definitive. And Dorothea Lange's pictures of migrant mother remain the definitive examples. So, uh, yeah. but it just wasn't me, you know. This is, a, this is a funny thing. I learned to do it, but it, I wasn't satisfied. And um, so, and, 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 and how, how, how did, uh, did you get to your own style? Because that's the question for every photographer, if it's an amateur or professional, whatever, um, what's my style? This is, this is, of course, Andreas, the question. <laughs> <laughs> There's really only one question in photography. It's called a visual signature, right? Yep. When, yep. When, when you see a Cartier-Bresson on the wall across the parking lot, you don't yeah. need to walk up to see the signature. You can tell. Yeah. Well, this is a result of, of organize, organizing many factors. Yeah. Uh, the subject matter plays a big role. Yeah. I, organ, I have a line running through my work. Because I worked with the 50 lens only, yeah. I did not confuse my proportions or my perspective. My perspective has remained exactly the same ever since. It's really a grammatical problem. But one of the things mm. was that I never wanted my pictures to look like another photographer. <laughs> I just did not want that. Okay. <laughs> and, and so I rejected, I rejected all my student work. I'm not okay. even crazy about my early work, but people want to see it to see how I became but, it, you know, Dorothea Lange told me something really very interesting. Uh, when I showed her my early work from 1960, 61, 62, she said, I see your problem, uh, Raphael. You have no point of departure. And I said, that's true. What is a point of departure? And she said, well, if you're going to the drugstore to buy toothpaste, you are motivated and directed, and you will, you will know what you're looking for when you see it. And it was only much later, around 1968, mm -hmm. when I started doing my dream book, that every yeah. picture I made was going to be about a dream. I had a point of departure. So this is what mm -hmm. I, I tell people in my workshop. Okay. And that immediately eliminated the human condition, for example, in photography. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you, uh, when, when I look through your work, I would say... Um, 60% or 70% what I've seen is a black and white. It was, it was almost exclusively until uh, around 1990. Yeah, yeah. later on it changed yeah. a little bit, but still when you look at it. Uh, sure. Well, you know, what happened was color got good. Uh, my first projects mm -hmm. in color were with dye transfer on ectochrome and separation. <laughs> and everything. Okay. You know, uh, it was very expensive. But color got more interesting with color negative, when you could start shooting color negative in the early yeah. 90s. Mm -hmm. And uh, you see, I realized very early on the difference between color and black and white. Reality is 100% scale, it's in three dimensions, yeah. and it's in color. Mm -hmm. Now, if you photograph in black and white, you have you're reducing the scale, you're reducing it to two dimensions, and you're taking away the color. Yeah. At Leica, we sometimes say color is emotion, black and white is structure. Well, you could certainly say that. 
Yes, but but the reason, but why is that true? And the reason the reason why that is true has more to do with phenomenology and the, its relationship to the external world, exterior world, how you perceive it. Yeah, uh, uh, you, you know. So so uh, you know. I, I sometimes I sometimes have the feeling, um, and I, I would say that's for most of the amateurs like me, that um, color picture always looks better because it's in color, but it doesn't mean much. <laughs> well, that's a challenge. You're absolutely right. The yeah. challenge is to make a color photograph have the drama of a black and white photograph. Okay, that's a good one. Yeah, I like you it. See, you take away color, you get drama. Yeah. And so uh, now with digital color, it's more, it's, it's more, it's more uh, realistic in, in that I can get the color that I want. And if you see many of my diptychs in the new work, I put a black and white picture next to a color picture. Yeah. And I'm interested in the language that the third result. What <laughs> happens when you put color next to black and white? That's okay. that's what I'm interested in. Yeah. At this point. Yeah. Um, in one in one of your books, I think it's the it's the mono. Um, where you have your your first your first digital one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, you said that um, the, the experience with the Leica monochrome changed your behavior regarding digital, right? Totally. Since, since the prototype of my mono came yeah. in late 2012, yep. I have not loaded one roll of film in any of my Leicas. I have, since, <laughs> since, since the day I took that picture, Andreas. Yeah. Yeah. Since 2000, yeah, we launched it in 2012. Yeah? Yes, and I got a prototype very late in 2012, and I started. Yes, I got it. I think in November, December. Oh, that and was. It, you should have gotten it in November 11. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I have not put in. I have learned everything in the dark room a man can learn from yeah. film, but I have a long way to go to understand everything about digital. Yeah. Did you like the dark room? I loved it for a while, but you know, it, at this point in my life, it, it's, it moves too slow. I would need 10 hmm. assistants to process my film overnight. I mean, I will go out yeah. shooting today. I will come back. I'll take the, I'll take the card out, put it in my yeah. computer and have, and have a new picture. Yeah, exactly. I, I like this compression of time. <laughs> Okay, yeah. because um, so, and but uh, I think in one of your books you said you spend a lot of your lifetime in the dark room. I did. <laughs> if you counted literally two years, right? With the lights off, I calculated. You know, <laughs> I from from the time from 1957 yeah. to 2012. 12? I I yeah. think that I must have uh, twenty five thousand hours in in the dark with the lights <laughs> off <laughs> or maybe a little yellow light sometimes, but boy, oh boy I will never go back. Okay. I have no interest in it. Yeah. Because at the beginning, some people said, you know, this is totally ridiculous to do a, to a camera who only sees black and white because reality is in, in, uh, in color. And at the beginning, when we launched it, we were also not sure whether this can be a sort of success. Huh? Um, but uh, uh, for you, it was very clear this changed your behavior. <laughs> yes, it was, it, was, it, was, it was just what I needed at that point in my career. <laughs> oh, you didn't see, know that. <laughs> nobody, you see, I was almost 75 when that camera came. You don't get a chance to reinvent yourself at 75, Andreas. You see, um, I'm, I'm near your age years. now, so <laughs> you know, I got a new life at 75. So we two are now part of what's called nowadays a risk group. <laughs> yeah. I'm older than you by far. Listen, I know. no, no, no. I'm, I was born in '53, so yeah, but, but you were then already nearly in the Navy, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so um, so from 2012 on, so. It's for you, but then you somewhere in between picked up color again, or? Yes, I, I realized that, that I wanted to, I see everything in terms of semiotics language, and I wanted to understand what was the difference between my perception of an object in color, yeah. as opposed to my perception of it in black and white. Mm. And sometimes, sometimes when I'm shooting with the, my early M10, 
I'll have a color picture. And of course, as you know, we can change, convert it to black and white. Yeah. And this sets up a very interesting set of concerns. Uh, I believe that the lens plays a very big role. And one of the ideas I wanted to mention was, if you learn how your lens sees something, your lens will learn how your eye sees something. Mm. And that's, what, that's, what, that's where I am now with color. How does, how does my eye see color as opposed to how does my lens see color? Hmm. You see, it's a, the, lens, the hmm. lens does add something. The sensor is organic in a very, in a very difficult way to explain. Film yeah. was very organic. Okay. Um, I have to think about that because we sometimes see the sensor thing from a pure technical point of view. Um, so, uh, in, when, when, I look into, when I look into your career, um, Ralph, um, you always said it was the book which, is, which interested me, right? Um, because when I, when, when I do the count, I think it's 40 or 50 books or so. Yeah. <laughs> More coming. <laughs> More coming. Okay. <laughs> is it easier now to, nowadays to produce it or is it? Uh... Oh, yes. Completely easier now to make a book. Uh, okay. you see, if you, if you embrace the digital idea, yeah. a bookmaking Lithography, digital lithography, it's, it's, it's much easier. Okay, yeah, so, so you have the whole pipeline then. Yes, yeah, yeah. totally, beautiful, yeah. So I'm still working on it, and uh, because I, I wrote years ago that when I make an exhibit of my photograph yeah. and put it on the wall, you see how I think of, about photography. Yeah. When I make a book of my photographs, you see how I think about my photographs. Huh. You see? It's, it's one step longer. And now the other thing I realize is that working online, I sent you the PDF of my new project. Yeah, yeah. And you see, I could put this, you can put this online if you like, the entire book, and it will show you what I am thinking at the moment. Yeah. If I publish that book, it'll show you what I thought at the moment. Yeah. Because I'm interested in something that's now ongoing and changing, evolving. Well, at, at Leica, we sometimes say only a printed picture is a picture. The rest is data, which means... Yeah. <laughs> data. Yeah. Which that's means, good. I like that. that, I um, that. And a picture which you print has a, co a completely different meaning. To give you an example... Um, yeah. I got this from Claire Jaffa. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's the meeting of the Magnum photographers in, uh -huh. in 2013. <laughs> uh, so I see. I could have a edit um, in, in my laptop somewhere, and then you would ask me, um, can you show it me? And then we go, oh, yeah, yeah, well, well, one moment, okay? Then, yeah, send you. And yeah. then uh, the search starts, and you can't find it. If you probably find it wrong, etc. But when you have certain pictures just printed, it's... Yes. It's a totally different statement, but, but you would say the same, right? I would say the same. I would take this opportunity to tell you that I have 10,000 prints in my studio, silver gelatin prints, right. and about 2,000 <laughs> digital prints. So I have a lot of this. I, okay. I, I like it all, Andreas. I basically- well, We have this for I, our archive later. <laughs> yes, maybe. I, I really, I, I really, yeah. uh, I like it all. I like having all this. As a, mm -hmm. as a way of working. But yeah. on the other hand, you see some opportunities in what you can do on, uh, online, right? I'm starting to think about it, but you know, when uh, you, you, you remember a couple of years ago, uh, you made this beautiful birthday party when I turned 80. And uh, it was at like a store in Beverly Hills and Karen was there. I think it's and, only one year ago or so. Yeah, just, <laughs> but part of that was uh, Kiran, Kiranani, uh, Laika in, in yep. New Jersey organized a portfolio of my work in Wired magazine. Mm -hmm. And it was my new digital work uh, of, in yeah. color called the, the Vertical Horizon. And mm -hmm. yeah. so it, the, the, the article went online. It said, uh, it said uh, darkroom master turns digital after many years, you know. So 
I called the editor. I, yeah. I emailed the editor. I said, how many people saw that portfolio in Wired magazine online? Yeah. And the woman said, 19,400,000. However, I did not receive one email, one inquiry, nothing. Now, this means yeah. that the delivery system yeah. is the content. Marshall McLuhan means said, nobody, nobody from these 90 million hits or whatever. Uh, not one inquiry. No reaction. No question. But no that reaction. means it's a cold medium, right? Rather. <laughs> yeah. This is this, the demographic oh. is insane. Now, yeah. I, you know, so uh, I find it interesting to contemplate because back in the 70s, this great philosopher Marshall McLuhan said the medium hmm. is the message. Yeah. <laughs> and now I'm saying the, the medium is the content. You see, people look at it online and they think that's it. They don't realize that there's another step. You could have a print, you could have a book, you could trans transcend the object. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't consider it a problem. I consider it part of the equation. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, but... Um, you know, um, we we always do this check with with Instagram, which is considered to be the medium for people who take pictures. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, the interesting thing is when you when you track the eyes, how long do you look at a picture at Instagram? Yeah. It's probably about zero point five seconds or so. Yeah? Half a second. <laughs> Half a second. Yeah. And then boom, 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 boom. So um, and after let's say twenty, thirty pictures, you leave it. The interesting thing nowadays that uh, the video creates obviously more interest. And what's your opinion on, let's say, well, formerly it was called film, cinema, whatever. What's, what, what, what's your, uh, what are your thoughts on that? Do you intend to do more there or is to say still no, photography? I, like that's... I do video because, yes. you know, it, it goes with my music, you know, <laughs> yeah. but, but, uh, I, I have started some video again out here uh, working, but the, the, the thing about video is that it has one essential characteristic. It must have motion. Yep. Video without motion is not very interesting. And so... <laughs> uh, John, uh, John Ford once said, cinema is action. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's pretty clear. That's good. <laughs> cinema is action. I know. Yeah. And uh, I am more, uh, my work is more about how I perceive something. Yeah. It's usually the relationship between perception and a static object, an object that doesn't yeah. move. But when I come to music, music is motion also. Music is action. Right. Yeah. So I like the parallel between music and video. Yeah. Yeah. I always have a couple projects. Uh, but I don't show them very often. Maybe one, I make one a year, every two years. So um, we, should, we should do again an M camera with video function for you, right? <laughs> yeah, we could do that sometime. Yeah. I'd like to have it. You know, I, 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 yeah. I worked with the uh, 246. My last video was with the, the 246. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, the Mono 246. Yeah. And the M we left it out because uh, there were a few heat problems to, uh, together with the sensor. But oh. Yeah, sure. you know, video is a huge amount of data, which means the data runs through the processor and that creates heat. Um, yeah, sure. And um, so the decision was, can we go with a smaller body or do we have a bigger body and uh, put video into it? You then, made the right choice. Okay, we go to a smaller body and leave video out. <laughs> yeah, I like the smaller body. I really do. <laughs> yeah, so but you I would say only body. once a year you do something as video. Yes, I, I, I shot some last week uh, of some trees. And okay. when, I, when I do it, though, it, it, it always has, it will always have music because the motion, the video yeah. and the music are really one and the same for me. They're, could they're, they're we, could not we show separate. something when we edit this interview? Uh, uh -huh. Possible, <laughs> maybe. It, it's, it's much more work for me to do video. <laughs> I would guess so, yes. <laughs> yeah. But I work on iMovie, you know. 
Uh, I could give you a little thing. Yes, I'll give you something. I, I could come up with a one minute. <laughs> nice. <laughs> we, could, we could answer to, to give you a real video camera from, from Leica. <laughs> good. That would be good. That would inspire me a bit. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. In one, um, you have this famous book here. Which was done by Tashton. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I can hardly open it because it's so heavy. Yeah. Um, you, um, you said, and uh, you said that this is probably a quote by you, and then you said, oh, it's by me. The beauty in women is endless. Yeah. <laughs> in the foreword. Um, I that, yeah. Does this run, does it run through your work, or was it at a, spe a special time when you did do this? No, it has always been, <clears throat> it has always been my concern. <clears throat> I believe that that of course when i said a, a photographer once said beauty in women is endless and i think that was me yeah. uh, and they had another thing they said oh yes it's by me <laughs> yeah but you know after i did this book yeah after i brought out that book i really stopped photographing the subject i oh. I, lost, I felt that i had it was a finished chapter it, it was well. It, was, it, it started. It started for many years. Yeah, sure. but, but I used to do workshops. Yeah. Uh, I I did workshops where uh, all, we would all photograph the model, yeah. and then I lost interest in the subject. And now now the only workshops I do with you at the Leica the Leica Academy yeah. uh, is about bookmaking, <laughs> and and it's a much more interesting, much more complex workshop. Yeah, but. Uh, early on, I, I would say that if you knew how to photograph the figure, yeah. and if a photographer also knew how to photograph architecture, yeah. those two subjects would prepare you to photograph anything else you might be interested in. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that, that's, that's, there's, there's a lot to learn from photographing the figure. You know, every shape in the world can be found in, in the human figure. Well, a, a lot of photographers love to shoot models naked. Yeah. So, what's for you the the thin line between uh, nudes and and pornography? Is uh, there a line? Yes, yes. If you have a computer and you and you go on you go online, you can find the oh, answer. Oh, okay, that's, that's different. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I basically the real answer is this, Andreas. In all seriousness. Yeah. I am a formalist. I'm I'm interested in the formal concerns of anything I photograph. Okay. I'm I'm interested in reducing it to its structure. I'm interested in finding its beauty. I'm interested in seeing how the forms of one object relate to the forms of another object. Mm -hmm. That could be the figure, it can be architecture, it can be a spoon. <laughs> a spoon. A spoon. Perfect design. Hmm. Even a spoon. A spoon, yeah. <laughs> I think of that. When I look at the objects I have here um, at my desk, you mean basically every little object could be for a interest for creating structure in a photo or, or so. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, and, and then what makes the, what, what, what you add to the equation is that you say, okay, now which focal length yeah will give me the proportions that I want. Mm. Which is why I never use wide lenses. You see, light, wide lenses are about information. You, if, you look at, if you look at our video right now, yeah. the narrative is horizontal. Yeah. Cinema is horizontal. Yeah. The le television is horizontal. Yeah. Uh, all my pictures are basically vertical because I'm interested, I, I don't have a narrative. I have a formal construct. I had sometimes the impression, maybe it's also, or um, I have to put it differently. Um, I so sometimes think that younger generation nowadays sees more in widescreen. That means the 35 or the 28 is more preferred than originally the 50. Sure. It was my impression that we might See, I'm not sure whether we see it differently, but, but that this is more like it and not so much like this. Uh, what do you think of yes. that? 
Well, you, well, I think it's absolutely true, but I will tell you one thing. Uh, the wider the lens, the easier it is for the photographer to use it. The longer the lens, the, the more skill required by the photographer. Okay, that would be one of your hints for upcoming photographers. <laughs> well, I mean, you see, Don't touch too much the wide really, lenses. What kind of information are you interested in transferring? Yeah. And and young photographers are showing their lives. They're showing. They're they're just showing the world that they're discovering. Yeah. You know, look at look at look at you go back to your Instagram thing. You know, in my TED talk, I said that that the iPhone uh, makes the makes everybody the software makes everybody in the world a photographer, but it also makes everybody in the world's photographs look identical. <laughs> you go on right, Instagram, yeah. and everybody has the same picture. There's. Yeah, and it's usually 28 or 27 millimeter. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's clearly, you know, I don't do social media, for example. I, I'm not interested in it. So that means, in your opinion, going to lenses above 35 millimeter tests your capabilities as a photographer, uh, uh, helps to structure your eye or so. Well, for example, I, last year I did a big project on Israel, and I'll have a book coming in a, in a couple of months on Israel. When, uh, so, when I uh, needed- Question in between. So you were there uh, for shooting for quite some time? Yes, I went three times to Israel last oh. year. Yes, and I, I did a book that's uh, uh, 220 pages. It's at the printer now. It's at the printer now. Oh. Yes. Title, so, uh, can you already tell it, or it's just called Israel? No, and probably not. <laughs> not yet. Uh, <laughs> okay. But uh, I, the only lens I would use that yeah. was wide was if I was in some archaeological site. I would yeah. use a 35, but I would do it so precisely that there was yeah. no distortion and you could not tell it was a 35. If I'm okay. going to use a wide lens, I will conceal it. And the thing is, if you look at most of my work, yeah. the last thing in the world you think about is focal length. Hmm. You just yeah. don't. You just don't even think about it. Whereas, if you look at a picture taken with a twenty-eight millimeter lens, the first thing you think about is, "Oh, there's a wide lens shot of a bunch of people in Saint Marco Square in Venice." <laughs> you know, that, uh, sort of what you think. It's the first thing you you trigger. Oh, that's a wide lens shot of. A okay, that could be, as I said, a hint to upcoming photographers, maybe like a photographers, look above 35. <laughs> well, you probably sell more, probably 35 millimeters, your number one seller, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Together I know, with a 50. It is. <laughs> Together with a 50. <laughs> Together with a 50, yeah. yeah. Usually, usually um, they say 1.435, 1.450, and these are also the mega sellers for the M system. Yeah, yeah. Well, 35 is above. <laughs> the, uh, the, in terms of Renaissance proportions, yeah. Renaissance proportions come out of ancient Greek Pythagorean geometry, uh -huh. right? Golden means, 24 by 36. Yeah. That's a very old proportion. The yeah. 50, mil, 50 millimeter lens will fill the 24 by 36 centimeter. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, that was the idea also by Oscar Barnack. That's why he came up with a 50 millimeter. Yeah, well, he was a very smart guy, and that's just one of his great ideas, <laughs> you know. But that's, I know that. Uh, uh, I used to discuss this. I've discussed it with Robert, Frank. I, I, yeah. I had the opportunity to discuss this with Cartier-Bresson. I mean, you know, I've discussed this with a lot, lot of photographers. And uh, the truth is that the 50 on a, on a, on a on a Leica rangefinder is, is the only thing you really need. Hmm. I could go around the world with one camera and one body, and I could. It's pretty I bad could, for our business. <laughs> well, it's, it's, I mean, no. I use everything because yeah, there yeah. is a difference. Yeah. You know? But basically, you said um, so. If you look into the view of, let's say, Renaissance pictures, it helps you to get this focus. 24 by 36, 50 millimeter. Absolutely. I, when I was young, my first trip to Paris, okay. I was 30 years old. I went to the Mona Lisa okay. and I looked at it. In those days, you could go like this, you know, you could yeah, go, no. <laughs> walk right up to it. I was there in 71. Uh, I was still at school. 
Yeah. And, uh, and there was no no glass and, and, no front glass. Of it and, and only a few people around. Yeah. And uh, I studied it. Uh, I studied it a lot. And I realized that the relationship between the figure in the foreground and the background with the curving road, yeah. that could have been done with a 35 and hold focus and keep the focus. See, I analyzed it yeah. and keep the focus. It's a very interesting problem because uh, Renaissance proportion starts with the picture plane. Like if you look at me, I'm in the foreground and there's a room receding um, in the background. Um, in, in brackets, just um, I collect Renaissance paintings. I see. So you, you're very I much at home. I with have this a idea. few uh, paintings by, by pupils of Leonardo da Vinci. Really? Oh, yes. cool. I was fortunate <laughs> to get that's, them. That's very the good. Time when the price was not that uh, high. Crazy. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so you were explaining. Sorry. Well, it, now uh, modern art, contemporary art, has taught us that there's a lot of information that could be in front of the picture plane, not behind the picture plane. Yeah. The picture plane is, is my nose with the background. But yeah. what is between me and the television and the, and the, the video? Yeah. So, so with longer lenses, I tend to bring the surface of the picture forward as opposed to the 21, which puts it back into an ancient infinity, a very deep infinity. Yeah. Yeah. So which direction do you want to go? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Oh, the point of departure. <laughs> yeah, 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 back to that, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, um, you just mentioned a few projects you're just into. One is the Israel book. Yes, it's called Sacred Land. And uh, okay. it, it has to do with looking at antiquities and contemporary aspects of the life there. And... Uh, uh, where, where, where have you been in Israel? All over the place? Everywhere. Everywhere. I, we had helicopters. I went, I went around to many places, yes. Oh. And uh, it, it, it was the most amazing experience because as I was walking down the streets of Jerusalem for the first time, I had a sense of my own humanity. And I had never experienced that before. In, in, in Jerusalem. And it, it was, it, it, it's, it, it's, it's a sacred land. Every religion is there. Yeah. And every person who goes there basically has that experience that I have. It, it is not by mistake that that is the place. It is where it all is. Uh, and and it's, a, it's an enormous spiritual, philosophical experience for me to have been there. And, uh, and we, we will see a, 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 a book with quite a few pages where you try to show this a bit. Uh, when the time comes, I will be happy to share the, the PDF with you. Okay. Uh, I'm, getting my, I'm getting my first press proofs back from the, the lithographer next week. <laughs> and okay. uh, and we, we have a rendezvous. I will send you the PDF yeah. and we'll discuss additional possibilities. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, because I've been, the last time I've been to Israel, I think was 2016. And um, I had the opportunity to be also in Nazareth, in Nazareth, um, with, the, with the mayor of Nazareth. Oh, fun. Yeah. The mayor, he's um, a Palestinian, but a, a Christian. Uh -huh. Very interesting combination, and we were at the um, at the coffee shop of his wife. And the coffee shop was in the old um, uh, bath hall, where obviously Jesus Christ was also joining at his time. So we had an espresso, <laughs> and it was a, <laughs> I know, was I know very, that church in a, a very um, very moving experience. And which is hard to describe emotionally. It's very hard, but but I have never taken so many photographs in such a short time. Really? I have never done such a big exactly. big volume of work. And I uh, uh, I was shooting digital and downloading the files every night, <laughs> and and uh, every day more and more and more. <clears throat> I had more hard minute. drives then, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was. Okay. It, it was okay. it was a commissioned work, and I'm extremely fortunate to have received that work at that at this point in my career. 
because I would have never been able to really do it until yeah. now. Yeah. So um, for print available um, after summer? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So, so we're looking forward. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do, you have any, uh, do you have any trips to New York planned in the future? <laughs> yeah. You know, um, before and after <laughs> the situation, um, yes, I, I had planned quite a few trips to the U.S., yeah. But no. at the moment, not possible because there are basically no flights. Or when you go there, you have to go into quarantine, or you have to have a new test, which doesn't say much, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I should be in New York. I should be in LA. I should be in Seattle. Um, at the moment, okay, that's how it is. <laughs> well, well, this too shall change. We'll we'll get back to normal at some. Yeah, yeah point. so we all we all say, yeah, it will get back, but <laughs> it takes. <laughs> anyway, so it was planned. Yes. Good, good. Well, you'll come to my studio and, and we'll go from there. Yeah, try to get a visit. It would be a huge pleasure and honor. <laughs> so your ongoing project every day is you go out in Long Island and uh, have you look at certain things and come back and... Yes, I'll, I'll show you. For example, yeah. I, 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 I had, I had this, this picture here. Yeah, I think it was in the, in, in, in the PDF. It's in the PDF. Yeah. And then I made this very peculiar picture of uh, the, 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 the fence by the, by the road. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This results yeah. in a very interesting diptych. Oh, right. Yeah. Which, which you will have in the PDF. Yeah. yeah. Now, you see, basically, this is where I want to be. This, this is who I am. Yeah. And it's, it's what I want to say. It's how I want to speak. Now, this will go in a book, you see. It yeah. folds like that. Yeah, sure. And this, yeah. this I can also exhibit in, on the yeah. wall as a diptych. Yeah. And uh, what happens is it keeps me engaged mentally uh, yeah. in an enormous way. I'm, I'm, I'm always looking at this and looking at that and, and questioning yeah. the possibility. You yeah, see. but isn't it, would you say it's true that via yeah. photography you learn to see? Oh, absolutely. I learned to see from photography. Yes. And that's why I said, learn how your lens sees and your lens will learn how your eye sees, you know? Yeah. That's, that's, why, that's why I said that, because there's a symbiosis back and forth. I see this cup, then I take a picture, then I see the picture, and I see what the lens saw, and I see what I saw, and it's a tremendous, uh, it's a tremendous experience. Because we sometimes say that in in the time you mentioned, you mentioned uh, the iPhone or all the others, where everybody now is considered to be a photographer, um, and we have this impression that only if you do photography as photography, and not only via your iPhone you learn to see better because otherwise you are drowned in just plain pictures. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, it, it, it's the same thing. Uh, you know, what's very interesting uh, is that, as I mentioned in my TED talk, the average person did not have a visual identity until around 1900. The priest, yeah. the general, the king had a painting. But then from 1900 to 19... Uh, 30, 35, Kodak came, and we had these little family books with little yeah. pictures of grandfather and my cousin. Well, now the iPhone, it makes little pictures the same size as those little, those little black and white pictures you would put in. That's on your iPhone. Yeah, now, you I was never there, <laughs> but they make it square. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I actually think most of those pictures will be lost. Everybody th thinks that those pictures are going to be around forever. Well, maybe we'll see. Uh, yeah, yeah. Usually, I, when we have a talk with someone, ask how many pictures do you have on your phone? Yeah, ten thousand. I said, okay. Uh, can you show me one picture from? Uh, 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 <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So first, you can't find it. Second, maybe it's already stored somewhere we can't find it. And third, it might be really not a good picture because um, this is a snapshot. Well, it has a cultural function 
but that cultural function doesn't happen to include art because you okay, cannot that's a good, show me yeah, that's a good, yeah I, I like show that. me a great masterpiece made with an iphone yeah i'm waiting show me uh, there show was me the theory once i think three years ago when one uh, when when a uh, hollywood director said and um, i shot this uh, completely on the iphone but the result was sort of gone and we haven't seen much since <laughs> it's 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 that's not what it's designed to do and uh uh it's really it's really something for it, it's just a good way for selling phones <laughs> I mean, the real purpose of your phone is communication. <laughs> yeah, but but nowadays, I think, um, as, uh, as you know, that we're dabbling a little bit in this industry too. Um, 15%, well, in, in, in Corona times, a little bit more, but usually 15% is just communication. Then it's email, chatting, and then taking pictures. So what percent is that taking pictures? What is the percentage? Um, it depends on in which market you look. Our guess is, uh, I, I, I do see these combined pictures and videos, uh -huh. probably 50% of the function, maybe even 60% of the function is now taking pictures, videos. But this wow. involves then also uh, the typical WhatsApp, Telegram or whatever that you send it uh, back and forth. Huh. That's phenomenal. <laughs> well, it's okay, you know, I, I I don't criticize those things because I'm having so much fun doing what I'm doing and I hope they're having fun too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah. I want everybody to be happy. <laughs> so um, I just wanted to show you, I have something here. Oh, there's your family album. No. What is it? I can't read it. This is Photo Kino Schmalfilm Büro Professor Max Berek. Ah, how interesting. Let's see. Wait, you find the 50. No. So that's from 1929. Wow. 35, uh, 3.5. <laughs> Fun. And um, that would be an interesting book. It is, it is. And I then to, done again was, in 1945, shortly after there was Bar not Barrick anymore, shortly uh -huh. after the end of the Second World War in Europe, again, Convex, concave, the 3.550. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. So I have this here as a sort of uh, inspiration um, because we still think that in digital times, the lens plays a huge role to capture light because we have these two um, these two sayings: um, photography is painting with light and capturing light. So, well, would that express something how you see it? I have yes, of course. Uh, uh, I believe that the light is always perfect. The light is always perfect because Not it's an absolute. Can't see it. <laughs> light is an absolute. It's a natural absolute. Okay. So when you can say, I can't shoot today because the light isn't right. No, I think your perception isn't right. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but I do like bright sun the most. Yeah. <laughs> I, I make most of my pictures in bright sun. If, I, if you give me which side of the street are you going to walk on, the shade or the sun, I yeah. go on the sunny side. You know? <laughs> because I like dark shadows. I like yeah. deep ah, shadows. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This, is, this is a big part of my, my graphics. My compositional technique you see okay okay yeah so and this these two elements painting with light and the other capturing light so that's the optical part always on the way nowadays to the sensor and we, we still can uh, try to achieve here certain things um, but that would go now directly into the roadmap. <laughs> the well, what you say, what you say is quite interesting. The lens <laughs> does one thing with light, which is really good. The intelligence of, of, a, of, of a lens, of, of a beautifully made lens, the sophistication and the intelligence of a lens is an infinite thing. However, in the digital world, what people tend to do, what you call painting with light, yeah. is that they start pushing it through Photoshop. Yeah, but that's that, that's where photography usually ends. 
That's we where it is. <laughs> I do not, you do not see much Photoshop in yeah. my work because, yeah. you know, if you look at the better somebody gets at Photoshop, the more their work looks like Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all the same. It's all yeah, the same. Yeah, you see yeah, these yeah. pictures, you know, of the animal from Africa with the, yeah. with the lightning in the background. Uh, this yeah. is uh, the dogma. I call this the dogma of Photoshop. Yeah. It pushes you to the same conclusion like a funnel. Mm. Photoshop wants you to end up with all these plugins where yeah. it says vintage cyanotype you see in the light room. <laughs> you know you get yeah. all these effects yeah. so for, but but for your for your pictures you, you you only use certain small elements like in in the former dark room or how do you do that exactly and i don't make i don't make different layers i i do all my burning and dodging on the, it's the same layer okay <laughs> And everybody says, you can't do that. And uh, uh, I've been told yeah, but these are the times, Photoshop specialists. <laughs> but uh, I mean, I burn and dodge. The, oh, yeah. I, the truth is, the people who started with the darkroom are going to make a different decision in adjusting a photograph than yeah. somebody who never went in the darkroom and just learned Photoshop. That's no lo contendere. That's just the truth. Yeah. Um, by the way, uh, we see nowadays with, um, let's call it the younger generation below 35, a sort of slight revival of analog shooting, of experience the dark room. Yeah. Um, have you seen this too in your... Uh, uh, because I think they want to learn how to see. They want to learn more about photography as a yeah. perceptual act. And you know, in the dark room is where you learn from your mistakes. You know, a photographer makes more mistakes yeah. than, than, than successes. And the darkroom taught me what was wrong with my perception. And then I would go out mm -hmm. and I would correct my vision based on what I learned in the darkroom. Yeah. So you mean, um, yeah, because um, I, 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 um, I'm not a photographer. I, I do snapshots. Yeah. <laughs> um, I do it the same way like you. I, I, I pull out the SD card and put it into the laptop and then have a look at it but um is it is it necessary in your opinion that you should have some dark room experience or is the way when you see it on the screen um training your eye is that enough the answer is yes okay <laughs> <was> both <laughs> questions uh, so i know that uh, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah it, Bill Brandt, the great photographer Bill Brandt said, all this talk about truth in photography, he said, it's the results that count. So if, if the <laughs> results are good, I don't care how the, how the photographer made it. It's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so um, apart from your Israel book, are there any upcoming projects who you can all talk about? Yes, I have another oh. one. Uh, and that will be coming in 2021, which is my uh, 50 Just years. Just the already. <laughs> yeah, 50 years of yeah. photographing in France. I have a I have a 400 page book of my collected work from France, and I have publisher Henny in London who did my autobiography, nice. and uh, that's for 2021. And it's it's many many photographs. It starts from 1970, and it goes to 2020 21. 1970? Seven, yes, 70 to 2000, and yes. So when, when was the first time you were in France? Well, I was actually in France in the Navy in, in the yeah, 50s. <laughs> but it, I think the earliest picture yeah. in the book is either 70 or 71. And, Maybe if uh, you met in Paris, because I was in 71 in Paris. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a bit crowded. <laughs> it was different. You know, I really yeah. wish I had have seen Leal. I, I just missed Layal by a few years, you know. Okay. That, <laughs> but uh, yeah. the interesting no, we, thing we, is... We stayed in these days, we stayed in, in the quarter where the old Les Halles were. Uh -huh. And that was a very lively French quarter, a Paris quarter. So yeah, but yeah. it's gone now. <laughs> so um, uh, 50 years, 60 years or whatever years of French photography. Yep. <laughs> but that way. It's, okay. called, it's called Salon Littéraire. Literary oh. Salon, Salon Littéraire. Nice. <laughs> and uh, uh, I, I, after, I, la I laid it out last summer, and, yeah. and again, 
the fact that I can lay out books digitally and can retrieve my files and oh, my cool, scans. Right, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm doing the work of 10 men and uh, it's, it's yeah. effortless now. I love the digital space for this reason. You know? Because you are the master of the set. Yeah. Well, you, you can do what you want. And, and of course, I always have great designer friends who have little things to say, but yeah. I get to do what I want to do, you know. Um, I forgot to ask in between, um, when you do your own printing, do you have a certain um, type of printer you prefer or is it just uh, by chance, by luck or? Well, these are done with the Epson, you know. I, I okay. have a big Epson in my studio and then I, yeah. a former student of mine has a, is in business to make the really large prints, the, 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 the yeah. one meter, two meter prints. Yeah. But you know, I have another project we could mention which is, I'm going to have a show at the Deichterhallen in Hamburg next yeah. year. The Deichterhallen, Deichterhallen, how do you say? Deichterhallen, don't worry. <laughs> and I, I spoke with... Uh, By the way, in 2014, we started there with our four years project, um, 100 Years of Leica Photography, the big... Oh. Uh, so right. exhibition which went around in Europe, but we were never able to show the uh, bring this to the US due to customs, transport, insurance, etc. And it was a oh, nice car. Yeah. So that it's will be uh, that's another project for next year. Okay. Yes. I just have to stay alive. Oh. I think everything will be fine. No, no, another another 20, 30 years, that's okay. Good. Okay. <laughs> that's that's good to know. That's that's very good for Friday. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So, um, Ralph, I hope that uh, flights and all that stuff will come back soon, and would love then that we have a meeting somewhere uh, Long Island. Okay. Good. Um, last time I've been in Long Island is quite a few years ago. I think it was two thousand nine or so. But I have a friend who has a house in the Hamptons. Yeah, that's that's where I am. Yeah, yeah I would have guessed so. <laughs> and um, then then we could discuss something. And um, okay, great. Yeah, very well, Thank you so much. Yeah, what Thanks a pleasure. Again. And hope to see you soon. Bye, everybody. See you soon. Thanks. Thanks.